Hello and welcome to Family Matters. I'm your host Ray Johnson and today we have a special show. It's a show on Parent Matters. It came from one of our Empowering Families for Success uh, sessions that we did recently. So if you have children you want to tune in. I don't care what age they are, you'll benefit from this information. And stay tuned at the end I'm going to tell you about a special event that we're having as Brenda and I celebrate 30 years of marriage. So you stay tuned and we'll be right back. I'm home and I love it. I'm home. I'm home where I belong. It's always nice to come home, but many Americans are at risk of foreclosure and losing their homes. Making home affordable from the U.S. government has already helped over a million struggling homeowners like these. The sooner you act, the better chance we can help you. I'm home. I'm home where I belong. Now tonight, what I'm going to talk about in this first uh, session, what I'm going to talk about is parent matters, tutors. How many in here are parents? 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 Okay, good. So everyone's a parent except for one. So parent matters, tutors. So what is a tutor? A tutor gives a person additional information and works closely with them until understanding comes on a particular subject. What are, I'm saying tutor, what are some other words that would also be tutor? Talk to me. Mentor, right? What's our, our good church word we use? What is that? Disciple, right? You know, <laughs> mentoring, disciple, those are tutor, those are all the same things. Another one of the things we talk about uh, in the seminary, which I'm in, in the seminary we talk about being spiritual friends. So when we're talking about discipleship from the perspective of a spiritual perspective, we talk about being spiritual friends. So spiritual friend, discipleship, mentor, tutor, all of these are the same thing. Question, yes sir? A father, yeah. And that's exactly what we're talking about, right? A father is also all of those things, if it is done properly. <laughs> because we know there's so many that is not being done properly because their fathers are not around. Their fathers didn't show up, you know, or they were there. We know they were there at least one day, right? <laughs> so <laughs> they were there at least one day, <laughs> but they might decide to disappear. But fathering. And one of the things I talk about also we'll get into is this, what we call a 24-7 dad, where we go over a lot of these uh, fathering principles to help you be a successful uh, father. So that's what we're talking about when we're dealing with being this disciple, this mentor. And we're looking at it, we're looking at it from the perspective of you as parents. You have to see yourself as a parent as a mentor, as a tutor, you know what I mean, as a disciple of your children. We, many times, we will go out and actually mentor other people, men and women, but we don't view our own family as someone that we should be discipling. We don't view them, we just view them as those are my cheering, you, you know what I mean? <laughs> but we need to be viewing it as we are actually discipling, we're actually tutoring, we're actually mentoring our own children in our own household. That's how you, that's the mindset that you have to have. And as we look at tutoring and parenting and discipleship, our children at all different stages, like right now, our children range 19 to 31? Our children range 19 to 31. What, yours are younger? What are they? About to be six. What's the range of your children? Twenty-two. <laughs> he said he guessed. Twenty-two and twenty-eight. And what about you? What are yours? Twenty to thirty. And what about you? Seventeen. One, just one. That's seventeen. Okay. 
coming up, okay, about to be 18, all right? So in that range, all of them bring different challenges as you go through these different stages. Those of us, we've already been through the stages that you've been, we, you know, we're, we've done the infant thing and the toddler, and, and last month we actually talked about, maybe we can make those uh, CD available, we actually talked about uh, the two-year-old to what age was it? It was like two-year-old to five-year-old. That was one of the lessons we talked about, and then also talked about the mentality of the uh, middle school child and where they're coming from. And then we talk about high school. So we are tutoring and training our parents. Now those of us that have older children, we know now that we have shifted from where they totally needed us and now they become independent. But now our role becomes one more of an advisor to them. After they've gotten out of high school and they're in college, the whole, it's a big myth that a child is actually grown at 18. We all know that, right? That's a, <laughs> that's a myth. So they are, they are not, you know, grown as it were at 18. Because those of us that are parents, we would define grown as you can buy your own groceries, live in your own place, you know, drive your own car, pay, <laughs> pay your own cell phone and all that stuff. We'd call that grown. They call themselves grown but we don't because they don't do all those things that independent adults do for themselves. So that Proverbs is just, just talking about train up a child in a way that they should go when they're old, that they would not depart from that. One of the things that as we do this mentoring, we must understand that the truth already exists. There's nothing new under the sun. The truth and the answer already exists. And as tutors, as disciples, as mentors, as fathers, as spiritual friends, as all those things, the truth already exists. So now what we have to do is be able to model the desired behavior so that our child, at whatever stage they are, we can give them the truth. When your child is young, like yours right now, the five-year-old, the six-year-old, well, he's starting to learn times tables and adding and that type of thing. So, but he didn't know that five plus five was 10, but that truth already existed, right? So they had to go through a process to help him get an understanding that five plus five is 10, to go through adding and dividing. And so now that truth is there. Now I'm helping you get understanding of that. So now you have it. That's how I'm mentoring you and discipling you, and I'm modeling the desired behavior that I want you to have. So once I teach you that, I can't send mixed messages. You know, the thing we always deal with, we look at things a lot of times as adult stuff, and children shouldn't do it. So we say, don't drink and drive. Then we say, get me a beer. And then we say, I'm going to run to the store, right? You, <laughs> but we, but we're, we're, sending the, we're telling the child, don't drink and drive. That's not a good thing. But then we have them get us a beer. We have a few beers, and I'm just going to run to the store. So we're, we're sending a, a mixed message to them. So which message are they going to really believe, the one that we're talking about or the one that we're modeling? Yeah, people are going to do what they see you model. If you're a supervisor on a job, you have a standard that you set. We all know that once you break that standard and let someone do something that is against the quote unquote rules, once they do that and you just look the other direction, what did you just do? You just establish a new standard, right? So what we have to watch with our children is that we don't establish different standards, that we don't tell them this is how we're going to operate. Then we do something different, so we just lowered the bar. You know, and it's tough. It's tough because we drive, and me, most of the times I get in a car, I'm going to speed at some point, right? <laughs> so you try not to, you know, we just do, you know, you end up speeding at some point. So I have to be conscious even with dealing with, especially teenagers 21 and that, that 
I understand that when I'm driving and they're riding with me, I'm actually setting the example of how they should drive. So I have to really be conscious to put on my signal when I switch lanes, to keep proper following distance, not run up on someone, because I'm, I'm, I'm sending a message to them that when someone cuts me off, I don't start speaking in a known tongue. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, getting into road rage, right? And all those things. See, but a lot of times we don't think about it that it's something as simple, simple, quote unquote, as driving your vehicle, you're sending a message to your child of how they should do it, how they should act. Because it can be a good thing or a bad thing that our children grow up and act like us, right? You know, <laughs> you're like, man, he act just like his father. Oh, wait a minute, that's me. You know, <laughs> so how did I train them to be like that? So everything exists already and there's nothing new under the sun. So, and I've been talking about this already. How do we tutor them? The first thing we must do, we must do what? Model the desired behavior. We must act the way we want them to act. We must tell them the right thing to do. We must demonstrate the right thing. And after we've done that, we must make sure they have opportunity to practice what they've been taught. Because if you don't practice, you're not going to uh, remember it. Because if you sit down with your son and you guys learn and he's sitting there and he learns that two times two is four and two times three is six and he learns, goes through that whole series and you say, cool, good, you got it. And you never go back to it. You know, <laughs> what's going to happen? He's going to lose it, right? So we have, we have to practice repetitive practice, practice, practice until it becomes habit. Being a uh, military retiree, one of the things in the military that we do is we practice, used to, practice all the time. We used to practice all the time. We played war games all the time. You played war games. What's going to happen in this situation? I always say if you end up in an emergency, uh, accident or whatever, you either want medical people around or you want military people around <laughs> because military people are trained to react and stay calm under pressure and execute what they need to execute. That's why we practice self-aid buddy care all the time so that when we find ourselves in a conflict situation, and my buddy get his arm blown off, I don't just freak out and pass out, right? <laughs> that, <laughs> that I immediately, my training kicks in. My training kicks in. And then I'm going to do what I'm trained to do. And that's the same thing we have to do with our children. <clears throat> we have to teach them. We have to enforce it so that when they find themselves in a situation, their training will kick in. When they find that someone is asking them to do something, it's against their values that they've been taught at home. Because survey after survey, survey after survey proves that the person with the most influence in a child's life are their parents. We might not think it, but survey after survey when you ask children who has been the biggest influence in their life, it will be their parents. So we think they're not listening many times. Have anyone in here thought your children were not listening to you? <laughs> We've all been there and we think they're not listening. And then one day, something will happen and they will either act or they will say what you thought they haven't been paying attention to. You know, and you go, wow, I didn't even think they were paying me any attention. But then they act out what you've been teaching them. And you say, okay, that's a good thing. So we have to teach them 
model the desired behavior, reinforce it so that when they're under pressure, the voice that they will hear will be ours as parents. So that they hear our voice, so that they see our face. You know, we'd like to say, uh, well, God is there and God sees you and all that's true. But even as adults, we don't even quite get that concept, right? You, you know, <laughs> most adults don't even get that concept. <laughs> From the pulpit to the door, you know what I mean? We don't get the concept of, because that's, we're trying to bring that spiritual part alive to our children so that they do understand that concept. So that just like those of us that, mar that are married, Sometimes when you hear God speaking to you, it sounds like your wife or husband, right? You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so that when they hear God, as it were, speaking to them, it's going to sound like their parents. You know, <laughs> that message that their parents have been sending to them. So we have to make sure that we are understanding what I want you to walk away from this is that we have to make sure we're understanding that we are discipling, we are mentoring, we are tutoring our children. They're not just our children that we are training them up, but that process of training them up is called discipling them so that we teach them how to be friends, how to, uh, I, you have just one child here. What's your name? I heard Melvin. Mel and Sherry. Sherry, you have one child, uh, a son, I think you said. With him being the only child, he could very easily have some problems with being selfish. He could. I'm not saying he is, but he could because it's all about him, right? He doesn't have to share you know what I mean? Unless you do some things that make him think of someone other than the three people that... Well, that's the concept. That's the concept. He does not, he does more talk than talk. Right. And, and when you see what the parent does, then you know that yes, parents... I forgot to turn on the CD. Sorry. The, um, her father, we are always there. I forgot to turn on the tape. It's not tape. not blaring, glaring, and that's, that's a credit to you. Yeah, that's a credit to you <laughs> if, he, if he's like that. He thinks he's grown? Yeah, so you were relating to my whole, uh, our definition of grown versus theirs, right? <laughs> yeah. and, and you'll go through all these stages as they start going through their independence, and you'll find out those two young children will be completely different. You know, they'll have their own personalities, A-type personality. They'll, they'll be different personalities. And those of us that have multiple children, and it can trick you if your first one is real obedient. You think, oh, this is easy. <laughs> then you have the second one, and you're like, what happened? <laughs> what happened to you? You're supposed to be like your brother or sister, right? You know, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> but they all have their unique bent and their unique personality, and our goal is to, as the scripture says, to be, to understand that they are an arrow, and that we point them toward their bent, toward their purpose, so that they can go out and accomplish and have an impact on the earth, and an impact in the earth, and understand their purpose, so that they can, when they have a family, that they will have a successful family because of what was demonstrated, how they were discipled, uh, while they were growing up. Some of us had parents there that did that. Some of us didn't, you know. And some of us turn out okay, and some of us don't, right? <laughs> you know, and that's just how it goes. Uh, as a young lady we know, uh, she had recently gotten married, and she was uh, an only child. And she talks about how her husband is helping her understand 
how to not think about just herself. Because that's all she had to care about. Herself, she had her mother, she didn't have a dad around, but her mother made sure she had every important thing that she needed. So she didn't really think about anyone else but herself. So now she's married, she's married and uh, her husband come from a complete different background and the good thing is she's thankful that he's that she didn't realize that she only thought about herself you know what I mean she didn't she didn't really realize it but now she's married and he's helping her learn how to think about others how to serve others how to you know what I mean not not be concerned about yourself but there's more joy in serving and giving to others and worrying about getting your own needs met, which is a big concept of uh, marriage. All right, any questions, comments about that subject before we move on? Yes, ma'am. Um, just in reference to us, we know that our role is tutoring and mentoring. When you have a um, young adult sit in a home, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. When they're still in the home mm -hmm. and that we can still make a difference in their lives. Um, I just don't believe that once they get to this age, it's all they Oh, I don't believe that. I don't believe that for a minute. Mm -hmm. Because some of us could have been misguided mm -hmm. until later in life before we got it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so everyone doesn't get it mm -hmm. at the same age. That, that just doesn't happen that way. So I don't agree with the concept of, uh, of what, you know, where you find yourself. Oh, well, they get a certain name. No, well, you know, if, if that's true, we don't need God, right? You know, we would, we would just strictly be whatever our personalities, whatever. Hey, but by the grace of God, we would be all kinds of things. So I don't, I don't agree with that concept at all. We keep, what has happened, though, is now you turn into advisor. And you can't make them do stuff. We were talking to uh, a lady last night. We were out to dinner, and I used to coach her daughter basketball. I used to coach her daughter. And I said, what's she doing? Because she was a case of went to college, graduated from college with the wrong kind of degree, so she couldn't find a job. All right? <laughs> and that's common. So I said, what's she doing now? We'd seen her about a year, a little over a year ago. She said she's in the Army. She joined the Army. And she'd been in the Army for just finished basic training a couple weeks ago. And, you know, so she's going to pursue some things in the Army. And I only bring this up for this point. In the Air Force, which I was in, the Air Force is very strict. It's the hardest one to get in and has high standards to get in. She had a small tattoo on the back of her neck. And the mother said, maybe like this. The Air Force, no tattoos can be visible while you're in uniform. And her mother said, well, because she was eligible to go in the Air Force, she scored high enough. The mother said, well, won't we just pay and they can, I guess they can either remove them or color them over something now with the tattoos. And her daughter being full of attitude, no, I ain't going to do that. See, the Army let you go in, the Marines let you go in, I'll just go in the Army. Everyone tried to tell her. You know, <laughs> but now she's going, man, I wish I would have listened. I wish I would have listened. You've grown, right? And all we can do is advise. Now, I have a saying that the greatest lesson is to learn from someone else's experience. The greatest sign of wisdom is to learn from another person's experience. <laughs> that's, a, that's a saying that I always have. So if I can learn from someone else's experience, therefore I don't have to experience it. And that's what we try to, don't we, over and over, tell our children, been there, done that. You might not want to do that. We, we try to tell them that. Sometimes they get it. 
sometimes they have to learn, and it is the hard way when someone told you don't do something and you go learn it that way. That's the hard way because the easy way is to go, all right, thanks for telling me that. I'm going to embrace that, and I'm not going to go that direction. So we don't give up. We keep advising. Our, our philosophy on parenting, our children have made uh, plenty of bad choices. And sometimes what parents do is they will get on a guilt trip about their children's choices being reflective of how they were raised. Not necessarily true at all. Sometimes it is. But as a parent, here's what you have to do. You have to go, okay, did I raise them up in the way that if they follow what I gave them, follow what I had modeled, would it result in them having a successful life? Now, those of us that understand spiritual things, we look at it this way. Everyone has their own devils to resist. <laughs> I don't care how well you raise them, the tempter is coming. And we hope that when the tempter comes, they hear our voice saying, flee. But guess what? We didn't every time, right? They won't every time. And we would hope that when they make the bad choice, that it's not going to result in something that's going to stay with them lifetime. And the fact of the matter is they do, and they end up in situations that stay with you a whole lifetime, children, et cetera. But I don't trip about that because all of my children know the right way. They know that they were taught the right way. We demonstrate it, you know, to the best of our ability, the right way. And they know that their own bad choices were their own bad choices. Not that they made a choice and go, no one ever told me that. If your children can make bad choices and they can look back at how you brought them up and they can say, my parents never told me that, well, then you missed it, you know, because <laughs> you didn't take the opportunity to talk to them about it, whether you thought they were listening or not. You didn't model the behavior before them because we are the number one influence. So never give up because, hey, we confess about every day that our children, they're going to come into their purpose. They're going to walk in their purpose. They're going to do great things in the earth. You just have to keep confessing that until it manifests itself. Because I didn't get it until, I don't know, I was 20-something, I guess, before I got saved. You know, I was 20-something, and that's been three, four years ago. <laughs> 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 so. Well, welcome back. Hopefully you enjoyed the show and hopefully you learned some things that can help you with your parenting. As I'd mentioned in the beginning, we have a special event coming up. Uh, Brenda and I have been married for 30 years and we're going to celebrate it and we want you to come out and celebrate with us. It'll be in September in Clinton, Maryland. We're going to celebrate not only marriage, but we're going to celebrate family because that's what we're about empowering family. Please log on to our website to learn more about how you can be part of this special event and that is uh, familyempowermentministries.org or you can email us at femi that's f-e-m-i dot zero seven at hotmail.com or give us a call at 301 877-1334. You see that information there on the screen. We would sure like to have you come out and be part of that with us as we celebrate 30 years of marriage. Well, as always, it's been a great time here being with you, and we want you to continue to have a family.